going to visit someone who's just going to tell us all about stuff about writing. And I know everybody knows everything there is to know about writing, but I think that you'll be surprised But what we don't know and why having somebody who is a professional do it for us can be really helpful. But first, I have to talk to my friend, Nathan. How are you, sir? Hey there, Kevin. Excited for today's show being a recent college graduate. I mean, it gets further and further the more it comes. <laughs> writing was very important when writing research, and I'm probably about to find out I did everything wrong. <laughs> well, you know, and that's one of the things we like to do here is to edu educate people as well as uh, entertain them. And sometimes we, you know, we need people to, to teach us how to write properly and how to get the best bang for our buck, whether it's on Facebook or or it's, it's copyrighted material or it's your own book. Uh, you, you really, if you have a desire to write a book, it really is interesting to be able to talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. And in the end, everything for the most part involves writing in some way or another because you have to plan it out ahead of time and make a plan. That all comes based off of writing. Yes. Now, you know, you just got graduated from college. So what uh, did you, you majored in broadcasting, right? Uh, something like that. There's like a sort of create your own degree program. It's called an interdisciplinary concentration. So you kind of pick and choose the courses that you want and make a degree out of it. So I did a lot of like media production and audio and communications journalism and stuff like that. I, you know, I don't know that I've ever asked you. So how are you going to apply the, your education going forward? Are you going to become a, a big time disc jockey or a, a talk show host? What are you going to do? Uh, you know, it probably I'll end up being a bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting that you say that because uh, when Anya was here uh, last time or when we talked last time um, and I said, well, you know, how should I present positive talk radio? And she said, well, you were a bus driver for a long time, right? And I said, well, yeah. And she said, well, you should incorporate that into your slogan. And I said, that's brilliant. That's simply <laughs> brilliant. I had no idea. So this is Positive Talk Radio. Get on the bus. Let's go for a ride. And so I think that that'll work. I'm not I'm not sure, but I'd like to introduce her to us because she's a copywriter and she does uh, copy for people for for Facebook and for uh, social media and commercials and all of that. And she does it in a way that um, the word I've never heard this term before, but she she uses the words that attack the same center of the brain like a great meal and a glass of wine so it makes you feel good about the words that you are that, that are coming that you're seeing on print does that make sense absolutely and so with with that without further ado here's uh anya geitz hi kevin hi nathan it's great to be here what a hi. wonderful intro I was well, like, wow, who is that person that they're talking about? And it was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> it, it is you. It is you. And how is it that, because I was, I've been reading your bio, and by the way, if you want to go check her out, you can go to uh, AnyaProWriter.com. And uh, you, can, you can hire her to write copy for you and to do uh, the types of things that, that you know, like, like I do a lot of writing because uh, I have to, but I don't know whether I'm good at it or not, but it would be nice to have a professional review my material to make sure that we're actually saying what we're trying to say. And, and I should I just mention really quick for those of you that are listening to the show and not watching the video and able to see Anya's name, her first name is spelled A-N-J-A. -A. Yes. <laughs> and my mother but, wanted to make it interesting. <laughs> and she did. So uh, before we begin, Nathan, I just wanted to, let, to tell everybody what we're doing this year that is different than what we did with KKNW last year. Sure. If what I just said sparked some curiosity in you, what I just mentioned was that we are now broadcasting the Positive Talk Radio Monday, Wednesday, Friday, KKNW shows all to social media and video channels. So we got it going to the KKNW YouTube and Facebook. Also the Positive Talk Radio KKN, whoops, Positive Talk Radio YouTube and Facebook. And you can also go to 1150kknw.com. Makes it really easy to pull it up. 
If you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see a watch online button. Go ahead and click that. Brings you right over to the KKNW live video stream. So we are kind of like all over the place now. And, and, and so if you go to any of these streams, you will be able to watch us live as we do the show. It really is. It's an engaging way to do it. And it's kind of the next level of what's going to be happening in the industry, I think. And it also means that Kevin has to comb his hair. That does. No, I don't. <laughs> if, I, if I had hair, I had it would have to comb it. But uh, um, but but actually what I'm using is a stunt double. Uh, I want people I don't don't want people to know what I really look like. So the fool that's on the, the uh, um, screen now is not is not me because, you know, everybody everybody has an idea of what when they hear somebody's voice. And, and Anya, I know you've done this too. When you're hearing oh, yeah. a radio voice, you you in your mind think of what that person looks like. Absolutely. And, and they never look like you think they're going. They should look like. Have you have you ever <laughs> have you noticed that? Well, I don't know if I say should, but um, yeah, uh, it's it it is an interesting phenomena. I mean, I think one of the voices that you can do that with but although he's on television if you closed your eyes like for um the the show frazier and kelsey Grammer, it, it was years before i knew that he sang the theme song because i didn't place what i visually saw of him with the voice he has a very good singing voice so it, it was kind of funny you know there was another guy uh his name was jim neighbors Oh gosh, yeah. Well, you're dating yourself, Kevin. You are dating yourself. I'm dating myself because nobody else will date me. But um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, careful, Kevin. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, but uh, um, he, Jim Neighbors, played, yes, he had a beautiful voice. A singing but he voice. played. He played Gomer Pyle mm -hmm. on, on uh, Gomer Pyle um, on Mayberry, and then and yeah. then on his own show. But he had a beautiful baritone singing voice that he was. Did? It it was like that can't be coming out of his face. Yeah, I can't be coming out of right. <laughs> that's, golly, golly, that's Gomer Pyle. And uh, <laughs> speaking of dating myself, mm -hmm. I was thinking in preparation for this show. Do you remember the Dick Van Dyke show? I do. In fact, uh, I I have a little story about that. Uh, my mother, who was uh, a German immigrant. Uh, they moved in uh, 50, 1957 to uh, Canada, and my dad was a chef. And so my mom was taking care of me as a baby, and she didn't really know a lot of English. And so she stayed home, and she learned English uh, by watching American television. And one of her favorite shows was Dick Van Dyke. And so my mom's view of the world uh, was dick van dyke that that's kind of how she she wanted to be laura petri so that was very prevalent in my house so i mean i'm sorry to do an exposition there but no no yeah. that's, a, that's, that's i'm that's very pretty. familiar with dick van dyke and the reason i bring him up is because in the dick van dyke show he and sally and and uh, uh buddy were writers for for um um yes. carl carl the carl, carl Reiner. Reiner show. they were comedy writers they were comedy writers, but right. I grew up not even understanding or knowing because all they did is sit in a room and crack jokes at each other all day. <laughs> and, and so I did process, right? I guess, but it was so it was like I didn't recognize what a writer was or that that they it was an important part aspect of the show because they're the ones who put the words into Carl Reiner's mouth for him right. to say. And right. it, it was really, really an important job because that's what the that's you know. And when you look at um, the late night guys and stuff, they all have teams of writers, like yeah, as many as, many yeah. as ten or fifteen. Yeah, I mean, I always, um, even um, as a young girl, uh, when I would watch some of my favorite shows, <clears throat> I would always wish that I was backstage when they had done the table reading, like when all the actors were seeing the script for the first time. And I would imagine that, I always imagined in my mind that that was really a fun part of the writing process. Now that's the end part. That's not the actual, you gotta get it on the page. That's not the fun part. Uh, the fun part's in, okay, now you've got it on the page and everybody's reading it, so. Yes, and, and I've been talking to, I talked to a screenwriter recently 
And she said, I didn't like being a screenwriter because I would write something and I thought it was really good. And then oh, the yeah. would come along and say, well, it's really good, except can you change this, this and this? And then the yeah. producer would come along and say, you know, this is pretty good, but could you do this, this and this? And so it became not her project anymore. It became, yeah. it, you know, it a became, collaboration of sorts. Yes. But she ended up feeling like she was lost in the process. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so, so that may, that makes it tough, but you are a, a, a copywriter and you do. And I wanted to ask you about that because I don't know anything. I know that it's important to copyright some materials right. and do that with the government, but I don't know how, how the process works. What should you copyright? What is in the public domain? There's that word that, that I learned recently right. in the public domain. And what's the difference between them all? Can you explain some of that? Um, well, um, copywriting is basically what there's a quote by um, a copywriter, uh, 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 Judith Martin, and uh, she basically said that a copywriter is a salesperson. Uh, well, she's a behind a typewriter, but let's update that and say, you know, a keyboard. And basically, that's what you're doing. So it really kind of depends on if you are uh, selling a product or you're selling a person, or you're selling a service. Now, I do a lot of business to business, so I don't do necessarily a lot of um, copywriting for products. I do copywriting for um, uh, services and people, um, some products too. Um, and it really kind of, all writing begins with research. And so <clears throat> you have to, when I get a new client on board, I do an onboarding process where I start asking them questions about their service, their products, you know, um, who, who, who is it that they're trying to reach, really understanding uh, the people that uh, are in need of the service. Um, and I think that, that part is the key part in any writing project is the research end of it. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So, I mean, because you don't know what you don't know. So you can't just like sit in front of, you know, the, you know, the keyboard and start writing when you don't really know who you're writing to. So understanding your audience is probably um, key. Well, Definitely. I wanted to ask you now, Positive Talk Radio um, is or any other podcast or radio show, should the name itself be um um, registered with the government as far as being copywritten or uh, being uh, yeah, you know that yeah the, I don't want to give any um, expert advice on that one because I don't know the the, the laws on that um, that's kind of something entirely like different um, than what it is that I do um, you know there is you you mentioned public domain so there there is that um, and there's, you know, a lot of, um, uh, uh, like, uh, concern and talk about, um, you know, taking um, other people's writing and, you know, kind of changing it just enough to make it your own, um, you know, and where's the ethical part of that or the legal part of that. So those are kind of, that's kind of questions out of my, like, wheelhouse. Um uh, so I don't, I mean, I have my own ideas of what I do and um, it, you know, it works for me, but I, it's not something that I feel really comfortable saying, oh, well, this is the way it is. Um, so I'm not really too sure, Kevin. Well, you know, the copyright laws of the United States could far, probably fit in uh, the back of a Volkswagen because uh, they're thousands <laughs> and thousands of pages long. Yes. Uh, Yes. And so you really, you really almost need to be a corporate lawyer in order to determine what copy, what should be copywritten and that kind of thing. And they can be expensive. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, yeah, that, that, that's pretty, um, it's, it's pretty dense. Um, uh, exactly. You know, what all the laws are. So, um, that's definitely not in my purview. I'm not a lawyer. I'm, you know, that is, um, that's very, well, um, and the thank dense, God for that. Dense writing, and thank goodness there are people there that you know can parse that out. I, I, that's like I said, not exactly in my in my wheelhouse. But what you do do 
is <laughs> what you do you have do do uh what you know what you do do is you do uh website copy social media print copy right. all those things that that are important and i love what you said in in on your website which is like it's like a uh, it you write information that it, that centers in the part of the brain that's like a good uh, glass of wine yes yeah. So it's pleasant and it's pleasing, and people enjoy um, enjoy reading it. And that's a, that's a real skill. Not a lot of people have that. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing about that is, um, especially if you're writing to an audience where you're trying to persuade them to purchase something or engage in some way. Um, I mean, you have basically uh, less than thirty seconds to attract their attention. You know what I'm saying? So you better, your first sentence better uh, say something, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're not writing, it's very different from, you know, academic, you know, when you were in school and you're writing a paper, I mean, it was graded and your teacher was forced to read it. Um, so when you are, you know, in the art of persuasion, um, you have to approach it in a very different way. And so I think the things that are most memorable is not so much what you said, is how you made the reader feel while they uh, were reading it. Um, and I, I did the um, comparison to uh, uh, wine and food because I, I blog about wine and food. Um, and so that's kind of my little hobby. Um, it, I, I like to cook, I like to entertain. So that was the reason why I, I, I chose that particular um, comparison. Now, if they want to go look at your blog and look at the things that you've written, where, where how do they get to the blog? Ah, yeah, I'm on Medium, uh, and I've uh, I, the the last um, the last uh, blog post that I wrote up there was an experience that I had uh, when I was uh, living in New York City, and I was working uh, down in Little Italy at a pastry shop, and uh, John Gotti used to come in with his associates. And uh, I would eavesdrop on their uh, some of their conversations, and they would talk about restaurants. I mean, most of it was in uh, Italian, um, and I I was studying Italian at the time, but this was more of a, a a dialect. But I could pick out like the names of restaurants that they would talk about, like all across the five boroughs. And I started making collection, and I started visiting these restaurants, and I call it my Goodfellas tour. Um, I mean, at the time, I didn't know it was John Gotti because um, I didn't know. I mean, I was like, you know, 23 years old. I had no idea. I just thought it was, you know, a, an eccentric Italian flamboyant businessman because he dressed really nice and everything. Um, and so I wrote a uh, I wrote a blog. I wrote a little story about my um, my adventures on these like uh, I, these restaurant like you got the pub crawl. And you now that was my my restaurant crawl. Um, uh, so that's the latest one on, on media. And that was, that was a lot of fun to write, uh, a lot of fun to remember my, my days back in, uh, New York. Now I gotta, I have to ask you because, uh, and, and he, I believe has passed on now. Um, I believe, but in, yeah. it doesn't matter anyway, but in like Goodfellas and the Godfather and stuff, we had get a certain idea of what the gangster types were like. And they spent a lot of times in restaurants. Um, is, but yeah. is, that, is that kind of how they were really like, or was it different than that? Um, well, each of the restaurants that I, like I went to, I was like, I was more like focusing on uh, the actual like food. And, and plus I didn't really know what, I didn't really know what was going on until like much later. And so, I mean, it was kind of like these familial ties um, and you would go in and everybody was very friendly to me, but they were a little baffled, but not because I wasn't from the neighborhood. It was more because I was dining alone. <laughs> um, ah. The Italians and many other European cultures, the, you know, um, I think the French, you know, uh, you know, I mean, Greece and just a lot of um, European cultures, you, you, you eat with people. Um, and when I would travel to Italy and I was studying there and I would eat alone, 
you know, the uh, waiter or the proprietor would always, you know, ask me, Perke Majadi de Sola, why are you eating alone? And they would try to pair me with people. And so that was more the, why are you? And then, you know, I was young. I was this young girl, kind of on my own, learning New York with a subway map. And I'd come into these restaurants and they'd be like, you know, they, how did you hear about this? And I didn't really want to tell them how I heard about it. So I just said, oh, I was just exploring New York. So I saw your restaurant and I thought I'd just walk in. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it was more they, they, they were surprised that I was all alone. So they would try to pair me. Um, there was this one restaurant in... Um, uh, in uh, Queens, oh no, Brooklyn that I used to go to, like Williamsburg, before Williamsburg became very trendy. And uh, I would go there like once a week on the weekend and the, they got to know me. And so they would pair me with their family, like they, their family coming in from Italy, but my Italian wasn't that great. Um, and so we would have these conversations where I was just basically the village idiot um, but I was with people, you know, <laughs> I was with people and, um, yeah, so that, that, so that's what I wrote about that. Yeah. Just, uh, the adventures. How did you become a writer? I mean, was it, is this something that you've done your entire life? Is it, is it yeah, kind of, but you know, it's interesting because I, I, I didn't actually start to decide to make a living out of it until, um, the pandemic. I mean, it was something that, I'd always done, uh, my sister said that she remembers um, watching me like at eight years old, sitting in front of my father's typewriter, wearing these like frames of glasses that didn't have the lenses in and <laughs> typing away because I guess I thought at eight that writers were really smart. And that was kind of, um, and my, my parents were readers. I mean, you know, they may not have had a collected work of Shakespeare. My mother was more an Agatha Christie, but she didn't have to tell me to read because she was always reading. And that, and she always gave an importance to uh, reading. I mean, even though um, she didn't have a lot of money and she basically put a bookshelf together from like two by fours and bricks and then painted it, um, she would always make sure I had books. You know, when the school scholastic um, catalog came in, she would spend her budgeted money on books. So it was this very real um a lesson that, oh, she valued this. And she, we had quiet time and she was in her bedroom and she was reading and I had a bookshelf and I was reading and from reading uh, became writing. And I was the best, the best apology writer. I would write apologies to my mother and get out of scrapes. You wouldn't believe because I wrote real and she saved them all. And when she passed away, oh, my God, she'd saved all my little apology notes, you know. So um, and I was the uh, friend who would always write um, uh, essays for um, uh, classmates. I would be the one that had to write a hard letter to a government official or um, so I was always the go to and I was always writing stories. I, you know, on the typewriter, my own little stories. Uh, I loved um, when I was young, my mother had taken me to Gone with the Wind and I decided, well, I'm going to write a story like Gone with the Wind. So when I was 11 years old, I wrote uh, 200 pages of this derivative Gone with the Wind story, but my version of it. Um, so it, it was just something that I, I always did. Um, and then um, uh, I found myself in a situation where I was working for a trade association uh, in New York City for property managers. And uh, I ended up, it was a small organization and they had a, a monthly trade publication and I ended up being the editor, but I also ended up doing a lot of the ghost writing for the board members. And I would do the ad copy for the advertisers for. So um, it just kind of came naturally to me um and yeah during the pandemic um everything kind of shifted everything changed um i i lost my job and it was like well this is what i have been doing because i had been blogging just for myself and uh i had some connections and i just started um uh, charging people well you know, it's a value and it's got a lot of value to it um so I wanted to ask you, if there's a, a small business owner who is listening to the show, what are you able to look at their material and then to determine what would be a great way to present their material that they may not be doing now that can actually change 
the course of what their business is doing and the amount of volume it's doing? Uh, yeah. Um, usually when people come to me, they have a specific um, area that uh, they want to improve. Uh, or sometimes they um, just want to add content to something. And then I have uh, a series of, uh, like I say, interviews uh, with them to find out exactly what it is that they're trying to achieve. Um, and then we kind of go from there. So um, it really kind of depends on what their goals are. Um, you know, a lot of times people, especially entrepreneurs, do not have the time uh, to do all the writing uh, themselves. Um, it is. And so I can, yeah, I can, I can tell you, it's very difficult when you are, like I do uh, anywhere from five to ten podcasts a week. I have to set them up. I have to get them all ready to go. I don't have a great deal of time to be uh, ferreting out and mining, you know, good copy of everything that I should be doing. So sometimes it doesn't look as good as it could. And it would be much better if I were to. Uh, so we need to talk after the show. Well, and, uh, yes. well and it's sort of it's like it's really all about the goal. It's sort of like, what is your goal? What is it that you want to achieve? And then the writing is geared towards achieving that. So, I mean, it's much more than just, oh, it's something grammatically. I mean, anybody can go in and I'm, I mean, I can go in and I can clean up, you know, anything grammatical or whatever. But if you do not have a goal in mind, uh, the writing's really not going to work for you. I mean, the way it could on the page, you know, I mean, you kind of want it to earn its real estate on the page in that sense. Um, so it, it really kind of all boils down to asking the questions of, you know, what is it that you want to achieve with this? And everybody's, everybody's goals are, are different. So, um, and that's part of what, that's one of the fun parts about new projects because, um, you get to, you know, uh, meet new people and learn about new businesses and, um, it's, yeah, it's very, um, social. I mean, the writing part isn't very social and, uh, you know, you, you work alone, but the meeting a new project is, yeah, it's, it's always very, um, uh, it's, it's a creative process. So that's, that's kind of, that can be, that can be the fun process. I mean, sometimes it's not because sometimes people don't really know what their goals are. And so that's harder, you know, and it takes another level of me trying to get that out of them. And sometimes that doesn't happen the first time. Um, I mean, I've had um, sessions where I had this one uh, wonderful um, woman who wanted me to update her website. She had been working for, you know, uh, 20 years in a particular industry, and now she was fine tuning it for the next part of however long she was going to be working. And so she wanted a complete revamp on her website. And uh, it, she never told me because she wanted to do a little story about herself. You know, she wanted a uh, part of the introduction, but it took three sessions to finally find out. And I was working with a web designer who I collaborate with and he got all these really wonderful pictures on. I said, Oh my God, I love the artwork that you, you, you curate curate. And he goes, Oh no, it was hers. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, Oh no, she likes to do amateur photography on all the travels that she does. And she, when I did the, that never came out. So it was wonderful because what we ended up doing is we ended up taking that whole idea of her kind of being, you know, this traveler, um, right. And, you know, searching for things, looking at things with a critical eye under the camera with what she does with her work when she has to audit things. Um, and so and the website looked great, but then the story just kind of really fit in. So sometimes the client doesn't really know. And then it's more a, a, a process. It's a discovery process. But then once we hit it, then everything flowed. And that's always fun when everything kind of coalesces between you know the, the 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 client's story and you know the the work that i'm doing you know whether it's you know a website or it's copy for an ad or, or just print work well you know i'm about ready to play a couple of ads that we created and um and i'm a, a little a little apprehensive about letting you hear them well, because I want to make sure that they're... <laughs> well, now you're making me apprehensive. <laughs> <laughs> because because I would, I would like your opinion. By the way, we are talking with Anya Geitz. And go to uh, 
Facebook.com to find out all the information about her. We're going to take just a quick break. It's just two minutes, it's, and it's it's real quick. But I want uh, Anya to uh, to listen to it so that uh, she can give me she can critique how well we're doing and if we if it makes yeah. any sense at all. And oh, uh, no. with that, <laughs> so now we're both on the spot. Um, so you're, you're listening to Positive Talk Radio on KKNW 1150 AM, and we will be right back after these short, very short, and hopefully very informative uh, commercials. Hey there. I'm excited that you're listening right now, and if you like what we're doing here, you're going to love PositiveTalkRadio.net. On PositiveTalkRadio.net, each show, which is recorded live, is packed with positive information with real people discussing real issues and positive solutions that can work for everyone. I hope that you'll join us on PositiveTalkRadio.net and listen to all 340 plus shows. I think it's worth your time. But then, that's just me. That's PositiveTalkRadio.net, your home for great progressive positive podcasts. When you want to say more than words communicate, you can with flowers. Your custom boutique floral studio in Bothell, Washington is anaturaldesign.com, connecting you to nature through the language of flowers. Where your people are is where our flowers are beautiful. Your success is our goal. anaturaldesign.com at your fingertips today. Hey, my friend. I'd really like to thank you for listening to the show today. As you may know, I started Positive Talk Radio way back in 2003. We were one of the first shows on KKNW. For 11 months, I was fortunate to be part of many lives, making a positive difference with great interviews and discussions, creating new thoughts and ideas. Sadly, for financial reasons, I had to terminate the show. Well, it took 18 years, but we're back better than ever. And not only on KKNW Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but also podcasting with several inspiring channels with the same driving passion as the original. Please visit kmmedia.pro for complete information about all of these shows. In addition, if you feel called to keep positive programming on the air, you can join us by sponsoring the show and aligning yourself with our mission, which is nothing short of saving the planet and each other. Again, that's kmmedia.pro. I'll see you there. And welcome back to Positive Talk Radio. It's Friday. It's Friday. I hope everybody's ready for a good weekend. It's Friday, and uh, um, I hope everybody has a great afternoon. I hope you don't have to work too hard and can get it done. And I'm going to ask uh, Anya now, what so you paid attention, and I saw you paying attention. Um, What did you think? I liked the tagline, Evolving Ideas, One Conversation at a Time. Thank you. That wasn't mine. <laughs> um, an associate came up with that. Okay. Um, I liked it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, she's, she's not going to say too much, but that's, I, we, we can, we can have a conversation after the show um, and, and stuff. But, uh, uh, and it's, you know, it really is hard especially when you're very close to the work that you're doing to be able to step back from it and write something that really will be impactful that you may not even have thought of. It's, it's like when the last time that we talked and you said, uh, and I said, well, what should I incorporate? And she said, well, you drove a bus, right? And I said, well, yeah, well, you're a bus driver. Drive, drive the Positive Talk Radio bus. And I thought that was brilliant. I had not, I had. Yeah, not- and, you know, and, and also I wanted to say when I was watching the commercials, um, telling stories about how you had um, said, you know, I, uh, I was the first one and then it took 17 years and now I'm back. Um, that piqued my interest and it's like oh okay there's a story there so stories are a wonderful way to um well tell your story but also get your audience engaged and you know position yourself in 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 a way that um i think accurately portrays who you are who your business is and what makes you different um from the other um 
the other businesses out there that are doing the same thing that you are. So um, this, the, uh, how you did the story part, was that yours? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, I, I like that. Um, and it was very colorful and it was, you know, very, um, the, the other commercials in there, um, were very colorful and, you know, uh, very professional looking. Um, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest and I'm embarrassed to say that I didn't know I was supposed to be paying attention to those commercials. <laughs> I thought you were going to be saying, oh, well we did this and then we talk about it. So, um, I, I have my, um, my cat here that's one of the things about doing um you know zoom meetings and broadcasting at home because you're at home and i have my my cat here and uh he uh did not like his uh breakfast and so he is being very um demanding right now so he was distracting me so i am so sorry oh don't be don't 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 be at all cats i, I cats got it in the tail i mean i was like listening right i was listening but i i wasn't I wasn't in my critique mode of oh I, I have to critique this so um, <laughs> well yeah, that's no if that's we go to fun. another commercial break I make sure to pay attention to that round well sorry we're not going to do that but because okay. that was it <laughs> that was it for today but how's your cat everybody well, I mean, wants to know I, well that's what I did I, I I got up and I poured him some like food so he would stop bothering me because otherwise you, you'll be able you'd be hearing meows in the background because he you know he thinks he's starving but he's a little fatty <laughs> and he's well, not yeah. happy. Yeah, you, 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 you got to spend your time doing something, and then uh, <laughs> if he's looking forward to eating all the time, yeah, you know. Well, that's. I mean, we try to have. I mean, we. Ha I have a garden, so I, I I let him out in the garden, and he doesn't stray too far. So he likes to catch lizards. Um, he likes to bring them back in, which isn't so lovely. But um, you know, he's got his amusement, so it's not. We try to make it so he's not always just eating, but he is a little fatty. There are lizards where you are. There are, in fact, lizards, and thank God it's only lizards and it's not any other kind of furry creature. Although he did bring in, when I first moved in here, he did bring in a mole. And I had to get a neighbor to help me move um, a, an entire bookshelf because the mole had um, situated themselves behind the bookshelf. Um, and, you know, moles have very um, distinctive, uh, I didn't know this because I'm a city girl, have very distinctive coloring. Um, and they don't look like um, mice or rats because I've seen those when I lived in New York. Um, but, you know, the little fellow was pretty scared. So, yeah, we um, are very careful when we open up the door and uh, let Ziggy walk back in. Just make sure we know what's in his mouth. So did, did you then let the um, uh, mole go? Oh, yeah. No, I let the mole go. Yeah. I, oh, I have and, to yeah. and your kitty was like. What? I, I went through all the trouble yeah, to bring right. that I mean, in. I, I mean, he wasn't and mortally was injured. <laughs> right. It was for not. <laughs> well, I had to put him in another room because he would he would have been right right in our oh, face yeah. the whole well, time. It, it's yeah. it's his live toy that you were taking away from him. Yeah. It was really hard for that. Yeah, cats are still wild in that sense. I mean, they're domesticated, but never truly because they are hunters. Well, we we had a cat that would bring. He would eat half of whatever it was and bring the other oh, half. Oh, good home. Lord, Kevin! I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. He would. He would, and it was like he would lay it down as an offering before us. Yes, and, well, that's what they do because yeah, you're the, you're the you're the head in their little uh, you know lion's pride. You're the you're the the head honcho. So he was he was presenting you with his offerings. <laughs> yes, and it was almost like I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. I had to eat some of it, but here's the rest. That's for you. Uh, yeah, I, had, I one time Ziggy brought in a lizard that was alive and ran away, and I couldn't find it until I did, and then it had uh, rolled up, mortally injured inside uh, um, my yoga mat, and I was doing an online yoga like class with other people, <laughs> and I rolled out the map, and people could hear me go, "Oh my god!" Because it was like. <laughs> was not good <laughs> oh well those things happen those things yeah. happen by the way so we're, we're talking with uh, anya geitz and she is a copywriter she does she works with people working with their facebook page their facebook presentation you know it's interesting do you find these days that everybody 
is writing something because they're either doing it on Instagram or they're doing it oh, on, yeah. on Facebook and they've got their, their portfolio and they're putting all this stuff together. It's got to be, you know, it's, it's hard for a lot of us because we don't, we don't have the skills that, 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 it, that it takes to be a professional writer. And so it, it uh, a lot of times it comes off as being less than a really good presentation. Uh, if if we do it ourselves rather than especially there are CEOs who are they're too busy. They don't have the time. They they do other stuff um, right. and they generally employ people to write for them. And you, right. you, you were one of those at one time. Uh, 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 for uh, well, I used to you were a ghostwriter uh, for some of the folks. Yeah, I was a ghostwriter for uh, uh, board members. Uh, for their monthly message to uh, the readers. Um, and that's always interesting because you, I mean, it's one thing to write about somebody's ideas, but you definitely want to write in their voice as well. I mean, I have a very distinctive voice when I'm writing just for me, you know what I'm saying? And it, you can even tell it in some of the copy and either the client will be on board with that voice or not. It really kind of depends. I mean, you know, if you're writing for somebody in fashion, uh, uh, like I write for a handbag company, um, that's going to be a different voice than if I wrote for a doctor uh, copy for, uh, I just finished um, some posters and he wanted a seasonal, you know, for each season he wanted a message and he wanted to incorporate living better. Uh, he's an audiologist for hearing. And so he wanted to do something like that, but I didn't want to make it too salesy because it was in his office and, and, you know, it was accompanied by some nice artwork. So I wanted to kind of tell a little story. So, you know, voices uh, are very um, important, which I'm going to bring up a whole other subject that could probably take a whole entire podcast. But now that we're seeing um, AI out there and there's some really great programs and I've been um, uh, kind of experimenting with them, you know, people's writing is going to improve in one way and not in another. And so it'll be really interesting to see because it'll help with the grammatical structure, you know, with the AI, but when we talk about voice, it's going to, I really feel like, um, I mean, it'll, I, I'll have to wait and see how um, much better it gets, but the voice is going to be a question because I'm like kind of wondering if that's just going to be a very bland, uh, everybody sounds the same, you know, because. Yep. Yeah. I, I've, I've been working with AI, by the way, yeah. if you don't know what that is, that's artificial intelligence. And there are now, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Anya, but there are now programs that you can type in a question. Yes. And it will answer the question with everything that's out there on the web. Yeah. It switches everything. Yeah. And it comes up with a, a really interesting answer. Yeah. It. No, they're very powerful. They're very, and it's going to change. I mean, you know, there are a lot of writers who are very nervous and saying, oh, is that going to eliminate our jobs? I think for the good writers who do have a voice and do have like a vision in their writing. I mean, for blogs that need just contact out there, um, it's going to be easier for people rather than use a content mill. Um, but there's still always, always going to be um, a need uh, for a good uh, writers out there who understand the audience because you know uh ai is not going to like we talked before you you're speaking to an audience you're trying to persuade them or you're trying to engage them and we're going to start to notice and this will be really interesting because you know people don't really pay attention to writing unless they are writers or they're readers maybe on a conscious level but i think on a subconscious level if you gave somebody an example of something uh written one way and something written another, they might not be able to articulate what the differences are, but they'll feel the differences. I mean, everybody's writing and thinking is different and that comes out that way. And then if we just homogenize it through AI, I mean, it'll just be really interesting to see if people start to notice that. So uh, it's, it's a new frontier, it's a brave new world there. And so I would guess that if you are a programmer for AI, yeah. 
that in order to catch the voice and when you, when you let's talk about voice for a second because what you're yeah. talking about is an individual stylized way yes. of writing of expressing yourself of expressing your ideas of vernacular um yeah i'm just like it has a personality it's like does it have a personality or not and i don't know how much personality in ai generated um blog post um could be i mean i i, I, I can't imagine ai being able to do uh, really targeted copywriting. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it, it has to evolve. I mean, it depends on what kind of information you put into it. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see, but um, a well, lot of writers are very nervous about it. But Oh, I, I, I can imagine because... Uh, if, but I'm, I'm kind of optimistic because I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, I like the growth mindset. Um, and so I just really kind of believe that there will always... There will always be work for um, people who um, have a good relationship with, you know, their audience um, or the products um, and have and have a voice and are good at what they do. And, and you know, have ideas and, and able to express them because, you know, it's the ideas, you know, that's what you're that's what you're selling is the ideas. It's just you're writing about them. Right. Well, as an example, when I was a kid, I used to read uh, Louis L'Amour, and he had a specific style of writing that yeah. was unique to him. And yeah. so you, you could pick up another Western. He, he did Western novels. And you yeah. pick up another Western novel by Gray, by Gray, somebody, I can't, by any of the other authors, and it came across differently because he had his own voice. And he had yeah. his own way of the way of thinking about it. But I, I look at it like, um, you know, they're talking about... Uh, uh, bus buses being able to drive without drivers, and cars being able to move without without being actually driven. Well, I'm I'm still very on the fence and dubious about that. I really am. I'm I'm not. You know, I'm not one of these people who are standing behind with a pom poms and a cheerleader and saying, "Yeah, let's go in this direction." Well, and there were when I was when I was driving a bus, there were bus drivers who were saying, you know, we're going to be out of a job in five years, or we're going to be out of a job in 10 years. And my contention is, no, the job may change, but they're still going to need a human being there to yeah. monitor the activities of what's going on, not only um, where the bus is driving, but the activities that are happening on the bus. So your, yeah. your job may change a little bit, but but it's still going to be there uh, because yeah. the human element, I don't know that, that and I suppose this is a conversation that, that would take a long time, but yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. This whole topic is like that's a whole other broadcast. You yeah, because it's but, big and it's going to change a lot. It's going to change. How that's going to change, I'm not sure yet, but it's going to change a lot. I mean, yeah. writers can use um, AI as a tool for them to get like started on research as a starting point. Like it, it yes. can be an entryway and a portal. So it can kind of be their virtual assistant, like set in that role. But I'm the one who has the ideas. I'm the one who comes up with the ideas and then puts that in writing in a way for that particular audience. Um, so it, it's very specialized. And so that's still going to be in demand. So that's why I'm kind of, so I'm looking at this thing of, uh, it'll be very interesting to see how it evolves. I, it'll be very interesting how I will be able to use it. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's different for everybody. Well, and even right now, how you form the questions dictates the answer that you're going yes, to. Yes, absolutely. Absolute stuff. So you need to know what questions are you asking, you know, exactly. And you, you're, you're, you know, you, you bring up a good point. You need to ask the right question. Yes. And if you don't ask the right question, you're going to get a completely different answer. Yeah, and you're not. I mean, especially if you've got a message that has to be targeted in a very specific way. And the, the only way I can think that AI could could duplicate a human really is if is if you were to do um, a conversation with with the AI as and you know that you could you could then talk to it like you normally talk, and right. then it could it could spit out copy that reflected how it is that you talk on an everyday basis, which is totally unique to you. Yeah. Oh, they. I think a few. Uh, I mean, there's tons of articles on Medium about it, but I think um, somebody actually did that. They did a dialogue with. Um, uh, As AI. usual, I'm late. Yeah, and it was it was a very it was a very interesting read. 
um, of how the AI would answer it because the, the, the writer was trying to trip AI up, um, you know, as like they were the, you know, the robot and the um, writer was the a human being. So, um, so yeah, so um, it's, it's been, there's a lot, a lot of writing out there on it right now. Lots of people are chatting about it. So yeah, it's interesting. I've been, yeah. I've also been told that just because it says it doesn't necessarily automatically make it so. It, it, it depends on the question that you ask, how you ask yeah. it, and and it can it can come up with things that are not quite accurate. Um, so you got to be careful about that, just like everything else. But yeah, you know, absolutely, it's sort of like a starting point, and right. you can take it as a starting point, but it still needs, yeah. But it will never replace, like as an example, a novelist or a, a person who does blogs, because that the experience it cannot duplicate the experiences that you're writing your blog about. For instance, when you were talking about John Gotti, that was right. a, an experience that was totally uh, totally yours, and and you can't duplicate that by putting that in, like saying, okay, got John Gotti at lunch, what would he be like? Uh, it doesn't, right. it won't work that way. So right. I think you're yeah. safe, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I I realize that there are a lot of there's a you know times are changing. You know, you know you and I have been around a little while now. Yeah. Times are changing. Times so are fast. changing. Yeah. And things are moving so quickly. Yeah. That it's I mean, hard. Easter Easter should be interesting. I wonder what we're going to be uh uh boiling, dying, and hiding. <laughs> eggs eggs now are gonna cost you know like ten dollars a dozen kind of thing and well, i was at i was at ralph's the other day and they had uh, a dozen organic it was the organic because i always like to do the organic with the eggs just that's just kind of how i am i just um and they were 8.99 for a dozen eggs organic wow. yeah right. Well, you know, as you know, organic is a bit of a sales pitch all in and of itself. So. Well, I, I kind of like uh, to know that the animals were not treated horribly. And when I do, I, I don't mind paying a little extra, but that it was much. I mean, I usually would pay something around five dollars for like, you know, four, four or five for a dozen eggs and make sure that they were free range and, you know, organic and um you know, so I feel like I, I'm not contributing to the, you know. Did you know that I used to be a chicken salesman? No, I did not know that. So do, what do you have to say about the uh, the avian flu? I, I mean, you know, I read something saying that they're getting back up to production level. So maybe by Easter, we'll, we'll see the price level level down a little bit. But I don't know. Oh, hopefully. And uh, yeah. they, uh, you know, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't do so much with the eggs, but I was, uh, um, it was a vertically integrated chicken company that I worked for. Oh, okay. And they, and they, uh, they killed two and a half birds, two and a half million birds a week, which is, you'd think that's a lot, wouldn't you? Uh, two yeah. and a half million, but Tyson yeah. kills 25 million. Yeah. Million. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Whole different yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be the person who has that job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Do you know there actually is a person who has that job? I know that. And I just, I don't mean, no disrespect. I mean, I just mean I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that. I, no. if I had, to, let's just put it this way. If I ha could only eat what I had to hunt, I would be, I would definitely be a vegan then. Probably, yeah. Yes, I, I, if, that, yeah. if it came, if it came down to that, I, yeah, I would definitely, I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't do that. If it if it doesn't have cellophane on it, I'm not going to eat it. So, you know, <laughs> cause like, cause like a steak. Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to shoot it. I'm not. Well, one, I'm you know, I'm not you know, good with good with that. I've never done that before. So I probably just starve. So, <laughs> so. I, I, uh, I have to tell you, there were because I was in the see, I was in the food business, I was in the restaurant business, and yeah. I, I sold and um, chicken and stuff. One time, I went to a um, um, a cattle, um, um, and it was a hamburger plant, and they and they killed the cattle right there. And uh, I, the, the, so we were standing right up by this little ramp that the cows were led up to, and then there was a guy with. 
he had a device that had uh, this was going to take too long but he had a device that you put a 22 into it and it shot into his brain and killed him instantly but i was looking at the eyes of the cow next to the one that was being um that was being killed and the for those of you who do not believe they have a soul that do not believe that they know what's going on i'm here to tell you that's a lie he was scared to death and yeah. uh, and you could the, the fear in his eyes was was remarkable but anyway we got yeah. less than a minute, we've got about a minute left anya right. Heights is the author or is the is the uh, copywriter she does all kinds of work for you hire her please um anya pro writer dot com and i've got about 30 seconds for you to wrap up anything you'd like to talk about ma'am i just wanted to say what a pleasure it was being able to be on here with you today i've had so many wonderful conversations with you kevin keep doing what you're doing it's all positive and it's fun i i enjoy talking to i enjoy learning about new things and and because yeah, really right all of us and a writer can you can help us all do better at what we're trying to get done which is to put out there the information yeah. that we want people to know in the style that we want them to know it. And sometimes right. it gets lost in the shuffle. It well, does. You need to be distinctive. So you need to find your voice and we're here to help you. I appreciate that. And so go to anyaprowriter.com. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank our thank audience you. for being here. We're going to be back Monday at three o'clock and remember be kind to one another because each other is all we've got. We'll see you next time. Bye.